Okay, so let us continue with our study of differential calculus. Uh, I have already uh, told you what uh, differentiation means. The geometric interpretation of uh, differentiation I have explained to you. Uh, now I want you to focus on the next topic, which is uh, uh, just one sec. Let me get the PPT in place, then we can uh, continue. Uh, so the next part I want to talk to you is about uh, polar coordinates. So uh, let me check that. One minute, let me come to this. Yeah, this is what I want to tell. So what we have done till now is this. I have uh, explained to you uh, what is differentiation, derivative means what, uh, <clears throat> and its geometric significance, that is slope of the tangent to y equal to fx at x0, y0. We have seen this using GeoGebra. And I also told you that it is very useful to remember uh, derivatives of standard functions. These are the ones you would require for this course, but there are many other functions and you will require it through your course for other things also. I have not mentioned them here, but I'm sure in these standard tables, you will find them particularly useful is this Paul's online notes. Please check that. Now what I want to teach or what I want to explain is what is polar coordinates. For to understand that, let us see what is Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates means what? It's like what you know about coordinates. Like if you take XY plane and say 0 0.2, 3, that means, uh, let me show you in the picture. Uh, just one sec. So this is my x, y axis to tell a point here means means I'll pick a point a pick a point here means you see it's x coordinate is 3.67 y coordinate is 3.11 and I can keep moving this. What does that mean is what I want to explain. Of course, you know it already, but I just try to put it in uh, uh, perspective. So in fact, I can even have a grid there. So where is the grid? Yeah, so here you can see if I put point A here, this means it's X coordinate is three and Y coordinate is four, three comma four. That's what this means. A point A is three comma four means it's X coordinate is three and Y coordinate is four. What does X coordinate mean? X coordinate means distance of A from y axis. Take a minute to understand this. X coordinate means distance of A from y axis. You see y axis is here and its distance, distance of A from y axis is exactly 3. Understand that this shortest path is distance from this y axis to the point A, that is its x coordinate. That is what we write as x coordinate. And distance from x axis is the y coordinate. So it's a bit confusing. x coordinate is distance from y axis, and y coordinate is distance from x axis. You must think of it like that because this way of thinking will help you to understand our polar pedal equation, polar curves, all these things in a different light. It's the same thing as what you knew before. X, Y coordinate of this means on X axis, how much will I go? On Y axis, how much will I go? For example, to reach A from origin, on X axis, I'll go three, and on Y axis, I'll go four. So three comma four. The same thing I can say it in a slightly different way. Distance of A from Y axis is three. So when I write three here, this means distance of this point from y axis. That's what I write first. And then I write distance from x axis. You can see that. I uh, mean, you can, I, I'll move point A to something else. See, distance from y axis. This is y axis. Distance from y axis is six now. 
required to go six units to reach A from this. You think of this as a road, Y axis as a road, and you are standing at A. You want to reach the road as quickly as possible. I mean, by the shortest uh, distance path. So then you will go straight like this. How much distance will you have traveled? Six units. That's what I write first. So when I say point coordinates of point A is six comma two, I mean its distance from y axis is six and distance from x axis is two. Of course, there are so many points whose distance from y axis is six. If I, if I take this, this also has distance y from y axis equal to six. This also has distance six from y axis. This also has distance six from y axis. But what determines this point is its distance from x axis also. You see, you take any point which is at a distance six from y axis. That is, we know it as x equal to six line. There are so many points on this. How do I come to one particular point? I have to tell you what is its distance from x axis also. That is, I have to tell you its x coordinate also. So if I tell you both, sorry, y coordinate also. If I tell you both x and y coordinate, I will have defined a point. This is what is known as Cartesian coordinates. That's why this is called Cartesian plane. Descartes was a very deep uh, mathematician, philosopher, French gentleman, <coughs> who first thought of this system of describing points using two numbers. That's precisely what it is. You give me two numbers, five comma seven. Five comma seven. It's not here right now on the uh, picture, but I can get that. That's not a problem. Five comma seven. If you give me two numbers, there is the point. This is the point five comma seven. You can see. So telling a point or telling two numbers, both are same. Of course, I can have um, numbers need not be integers. For example, it can be minus two point three nine minus point six seven. Uh, anything. It can be almost anything. Uh, any. Uh, not almost any real number it can be minus 2.75.6.11 like this i can get various coordinates of various points these are called cartesian coordinates so essentially cartesian coordinates means give me two number i'll show you a point that's a marriage between algebra and uh, geometry it means if you tell me two points uh, two numbers which is algebraic or arithmetic I can give you a point in the plane that is geometry. So it's the wedding between algebra and uh, geometry is what Descartes uh, suggested. And that's why it's called Cartesian coordinates. Now, what I want to do is uh, this is uh, just a minute. Uh, this is what is Cartesian coordinates mean. Cartesian coordinates means distances from two fixed particular uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates means distances from two fixed perpendicular lines and ordered. This is all this I've explained to you just now. X coordinate of a point is distance from Y axis and Y coordinate is distance from X axis. And I always write in this order. I can't change. I, I like to write distance from Y axis first and then distance from X axis and X axis Y axis are fixed. There are two perpendicular lines in the plane. They are fixed, means uh, I decide them which are those two x axis and y. I means the person who is solving the problem will decide which is x axis, which is y axis. And their intersection is obviously its coordinates is 0, 0, because I have to go 0 on x axis and 0 on y axis to reach that point. So it is the same thing as saying its distance from x axis, y axis is 0, and distance from x axis is 0. That's the origin. That's the, these are all standard terminology which you must already be familiar with. So I'm trying to go fast, quick in these things. Now what I'm interested in is something else, which is called polar, which are called polar coordinates. Polar coordinates, uh, basically, basically Cartesian coordinates are two real numbers. Remember this. If you give me two real numbers, I have given a point in the Cartesian plane. Now also I want to give you two numbers, but in a, I want to measure, I want to specify the point in a different way. Now what I will do is I will fix a point. See in this Cartesian coordinate, I fixed two lines, perpendicular lines and called one as x axis, called another as y axis. Now I will, this is one uh, 
uh, what is known as frame of reference. You understand the phrase frame of reference. That means I have fixed up X and Y, X axis and Y axis. With respect to this, I will try to explain what other points are. That's what I did in GeoGebra. 4, 3 means first I'll fix up a X axis, then I'll fix up a Y axis, which is perpendicular to X axis. And then I'll go 4 on X axis, which means distance from Y axis is 4. And then I'll go 3 on Y axis, which means distance from X axis is 3. So all this you must keep in mind when you when somebody says Cartesian coordinates. Now I want to do a similar thing with a different frame of reference. Would you do a different frame of reference? That's what I'm going to explain to you. Now fix up a point in the plane and angle with a fixed way and then you fix up a ray. I'll show you uh, GeoGebra uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, application. Hopefully, I don't know why it is not coming. Some problem with my computer. So let me restart and uh, do this. It should come. I don't know why it's not coming. So I'm trying to teach you polar coordinates. If you already know that, you can skip this part. So open. I have already made one small. Uh, where is this? Here it is. This is what I wanted to show you. So in this, <clears throat> so recall Cartesian coordinates means I fix up two perpendicular straight lines, and I'm telling you distances from these two lines. That is what Cartesian coordinates means. Now I will try to tell you a different thing. What is the different thing? Don't see the algebra window of this because that is more confusing for you. Don't see that. Just see the geometry part. So here is a plane. I have not yet fixed up any line or anything. No x axis, no y axis. It's a blank sheet. In this, I'll fix up a point. I'll start with a point. Some point I'll take. And then I will take a line, a ray actually. Means starting at O. Just draw one line. In this picture, it's horizontal, but it doesn't have to be horizontal. It can be any line. Normally, we, will, we would like to, to start with, to learn somewhere we have to start. So I will take positive x axis. So I have fixed up a point and then I have fixed up a uh, ray. I have fixed up a line starting, infinite line starting at O. It's only in one direction. And now I pick up any point, I'll call that point P, some point. Now, how do I tell this point with respect to these two objects? The two objects, one first object is O, which is the point, and second object is the ray. Remember, these are the two objects. With O, I can tell how far P is from O. I can tell you how far P is from O. That means the distance from O to P, I can tell. But if I tell just distance, P can be anywhere. The, for example, if I say distance 5 from O, you know that all the points at a distance 5 from O is a circle. So I cannot then define one point. There are so many points at distance 5 from one fixed point. So what I have to tell you is, we, I also have this ray. So if I tell you this angle, apart from this distance, if I tell you this angle, then I will have very precisely mentioned what that point P is. That means I have to tell you two numbers. One is how far is P from O and then what is this angle with respect to this arbitrarily fixed line. In this case, I have taken positive X axis. So with respect to positive X axis, what is the angle? See if as the angle changes, <coughs> you will see that point will also change or both. See, this is the trace of it. You can see how the point is moving. So basically to tell a point, I need to tell on that. to specify a point. I just need to uh, Yeah, 
to specify a point i need to show you where the uh, to specify a point i need to tell you how far it is from origin and what is this angle if i tell you these two things the point p is clearly defined see here this r it's very close to the origin here it's very close to the origin here it is origin means not origin i won't call it origin right now i'll call it this arbitrarily fixed point o it may be very close to this angle is more here that's okay angle can vary from 0 to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians you see correct and then distance can vary anything from 0 to infinity 0 means it is point o itself otherwise it can be very far it doesn't matter anywhere it can be uh, so this is called if i tell you r and theta then i have told you a point for example r equal to 5 uh, for example here you see uh, just you see the geometry for some time if r is 6.56 that means distance of p from o is 6.56 theta is the angle this is 30.9 degrees so if i tell you these two numbers it gives a point it defines a point in fact if i change it's something else you see now as it moves somewhere here i have chosen some random thing i won't tell you how i chose this but you can see that at this point distance is 6.64 and angle is 54.33 at this point distance has become 1.6 1.7 and angle is 157.85 degrees. You can convert it to radians, but I just left it in degrees. So what I'm trying to impress upon you is, if you tell me two things, R and theta, I will have given you a point. Here, there's no x-axis, y-axis. Try to understand that. There's no x-axis, y-axis. But instead, what is there is, you will tell me, uh, uh, so how did I start? Let me start from the beginning. That might uh, make you understand better. I will first start with a point. I will call arbitrarily some, I, I'll start with a plane actually. I'll start with the plane. In the plane, I'll fix an arbitrary point. Whenever I want to define a point, I will tell you how say for example i want to define point p i will have to tell you how far it is from o that means i have to tell you what is the distance just that will not suffice i need one more thing so for that what do i do i fix up a line arbitrary line in this case i have chosen positive x-axis arbitrary line i choose and i'll tell you what is the angle between this line and the point if i specify an angle i will reach a point means but so what i'm trying to tell you is defining the point is same as giving two numbers one r one theta that means distance from a fixed point and angle with respect to a given line these are the two coordinates i have to tell you this is called polar coordinates of this point of course i could have fixed up a x axis and a y axis and origin o and figured out oh this is x coordinate and this is y coordinate that is possible but some cases it's easier and better to deal with polar coordinates i'll come up i'll come up with examples i'll show you physical situations where polar coordinates are better to deal with than uh, cartesian coordinates But anytime, anything to do with rotation about a fixed point, polar coordinates are much easier to work with. Whatever it means, I don't want to explain that right now, but you will see soon. But my point, what I'm trying to tell you here is, polar coordinates are coordinates of a point where I will not give you two distances. Instead of that, I'll give you one distance from a fixed point and angle from a fixed line. So distance from a fixed point and angle from a fixed line, fixed line. So basically in this system, instead of fixing up two uh, straight lines, I will fix up a point and a line, a point and a ray, a line. And any, for example, if I want to take this point, let us check this. If I want to take this point, that means I have to tell you what is the distance from O to D. I have to tell you that. 
for example here is 11.82 and then i have to tell you what is the angle which angle i will have to tell you this angle with respect to this uh, oh sorry one minute i will add i know geogebra is not very conducive for uh, it will give me 360 minus this it is giving me so let me just change that uh, let me see if it gives this no it doesn't give me sorry angle this angle uh, this angle this is what i want this angle it will give me this uh, if i tell you this distance and this angle it will have told me i can tell you uh, specify a point this is what i wanted to show you you keep seeing here g is the length of this line segment od g g is the segment and its length is 10.6 and angle is 29.4 degrees this angle what is that angle that angle is the angle between the initial ray which i started with and distance from this point they are the two things so these two are independent in the sense one doesn't depend on the other you see one doesn't depend on the other g can be anything for a fixed angle g can be anything if you fix up an angle g can be anything for a fixed G, angle can be anything. Anything means 0 to 360. Of course, it can be more than 360 also, but then we know how to work it out. So, giving the distance from a point and angle with the initial line gives me polar coordinates. This, if, For example, if I want to specify D, I will tell you R is 4.36 and theta is 51.53 degrees. That is what I will tell for this D. If I want to some other d then i'll tell you 10.46 and 26.15 10.46 means this that is length of the distance of d from o and this angle will tell me angle between the fixed line and the radius i mean the line segment joining o and d this angle it this is called this these two things these two numbers are called polar coordinates clearly if you give me r and theta if you give me an r and an angle if you give me a distance and an angle there is a fixed point in the plane similarly if you give me a point in the plane you give me any point in the plane i can always that's what i showed you just now you give me any point in the plane then i can find out how far it is from o and what is the angle e o and this line i can find this out so given a point the same thing as finding uh, giving two coordinates which are called polar coordinates there are some some names to it so let me tell you those names uh, name is that just one minute i will come back to this let me start with the original one this uh, o that's the initial point it's called the initial point and this ray is called initial ray initial line these are this is o is also called pole pole means uh one pole you know p o l e pole in english so this is like a fixed pole it's like a uh, in kannada what we say guta or kamba you keep this is fixed and my point is moving all around this particular fixed point and i will measure how much is the angle between this fixed line and wherever the point is so that will give me polar coordinates so the, uh, i want to tell, just tell you the definition so this is what it is polar coordinates means distance from a fixed point o and the angle with the fixed ray starting at the fixed point and r is always greater than zero theta can be zero doesn't matter if r is zero it means it just uh, comes down to the fixed point itself. So I have shown you the GeoGebra illustration also for polar coordinates. And uh, so this is another way of 
giving defining a point in the plane this is one way cartesian coordinates is one way polar coordinates is another way of defining a point in the plane so i have shown you the uh, fixed point is called the pole and the ray is called the initial line and the line segment op is called the radius vector uh, so i hope these words are clear to everybody uh, see this if i fix up a, if i take a point then this r the that is called radius vector actually it's, it's a vector starting from o ending at t and this angle is the polar angle so uh, radius and angle these two things will define the point this is what i wanted to explain so <clears throat> this is polar coordinates and these are the terms we will keep using fixed point is called the pole and the ray is called the initial line or initial ray uh, and the line segment op that is the uh, uh, vector starting at zero ending at p in that direction op direction is called the radius vector we will use these terms often now we want to know what is the relationship between cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates this is a very important step so let me say this and stop today's uh, session uh, this is yeah so as p changes no no p this is i want to depend relation between the two so let me check if i have a separate uh, uh, this is there this is i want to define so here is uh, o uh, this is the order. so to start with what i'm trying to do here now is give you relation between cartesian and polar coordinates there is the algebra here i want you to understand this so let me show you a geogebra illustration of it so here is x y axis and this is the origin o and this is also my pole that means i what i am going to do is i am going to give you a point here and tell you what when i give a point here means i have two ways of giving one is i can give it x coordinate y coordinate another is i can give you what is the distance from o and what is the angle with this ray this ray is what i will be using i mean that, uh, i can give point in either of the two ways so now so let's take this point some point i have taken i'm calling it p of course you can see it here i have taken 3 comma 5 that's okay doesn't matter uh, that means its x coordinate is this its x this is x coordinate and similarly its uh, y coordinate is this much this is the y coordinate so i can give x and y coordinate and try to tell you what this point is so to tell this point i can tell you x and y coordinate you can see that as i move p x and y coordinate are change correct you can see that x coordinate is very small here y coordinate is increasing then as i move point this way x coordinate is increasing so as x increases y is decreasing here if i go like this x is increasing y is also increasing if i go horizontal then x is increasing y is not changing if i go vertical x is remaining same but y is changing so these are all relation between x and y this is what one is trying to follow in uh, it can be negative also in calculus in mathematics it becomes very important to find out how x and y are changing with respect to each other so i already told you differentiation and things like that now what i want to tell is how is what is the relationship between polar coordinates so now polar coordinates and cartesian coordinates now let us try to find out what is the polar coordinates of this um, point p so <clears throat> polar coordinates means you will have to uh, oh, sorry i is there so you take up this i have to tell you oh, so this is same as this okay y coordinate we will come to this later no problem uh, polar coordinates of p means i have to tell you how far it is from o and what is this angle these are the two things i have to tell you so for example p is at a distance 9.58 its polar coordinates are 9.58 comma 54.17 degrees this means 
distance of t from the original pole is 9.58 and angle of op with respect to the fixed line which here is x axis positive x axis is 54.17 of course if i want to change point p those two or one of them will keep changing these two k and alpha what you see here can keep changing that is how you get different points so what i am trying to explain is uh, now don't look at algebra too much look at the geometry part uh, to define this point p i have two options one is i can tell you x other than this i can tell you y by the way y this is also y i don't need the uh, y to be only this sorry this i need uh, not necessarily oc is same as pb that's what, uh, oc is same as bp that's what i want to just bring it to your attention so to mention what are the coordinates of p i can tell x and y or i can tell r and theta if i use any one of the systems i have defined p my question here now is how do i relate the two that means if i know x and y can i find r and theta or if i know r and theta can i find x and y that's the question relation between two frames of firstly i hope you understood there are two frames of reference one is x axis y axis that is one frame of reference two perpendicular lines and giving a point means giving x coordinate and y coordinate secondly another system is giving distance from this point o and the angle with respect to this ray if i give you those two things then also i will have given you point p so that means r and theta are given or x and y are given if you give me x and y p is uniquely defined if you give me r and theta then again point is uniquely defined now the question is is there a relationship between them can that means if i know x and y can i find r and theta or if i know r and theta can i find x and y that's the question that's pretty straightforward from pythagoras theorem r square is x square plus y square that's why i wrote this oc as bp you see r square is x square plus y square that means if you know x and y i know r x may be 3 y may be 4 then r is root of 3 square plus 4 square which is 5 so if you know give me x and y i know r do i know theta if you know x give me x and y of course i know because tan theta is y by x which means theta is tan inverse of y by x so if you give me y and x i know how to find theta i know how to find r so this is one way transformation means if you give me cartesian coordinates i know its polar coordinates if you give me x and y i can find r and theta now ulta the reverse which means if you give me r and theta can you find x and y of course i can do that because you look at this right angle triangle and see what is cos theta cos theta is by definition adjacent side by hypotenuse here adjacent side is x hypotenuse is r so cos theta is x by r cos theta is x by r which means x is equal to r cos theta that means this length ob is op times cos theta so x i know in terms of r and theta r cos theta similarly sin theta is y by r by definition definition of sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse so here in this right angle triangle opposite side to theta is y and hypotenuse is r so sin theta is y by r sin theta is y by r which means y is equal to r sin theta that means this length pb is op into sin theta because sin theta is pb divided by po or bp by op so what i am trying to tell you is x if you give me r and theta i can find x and y if you give me x and y i can find r and theta this is what is the crux of this 
uh, small session that if you give me Cartesian coordinates, I can find polar coordinates. If you give me polar coordinates, I can find Cartesian coordinates. So what is the relationship between them is mentioned here in this slide that if you give me X and Y, I can find R and theta this way. For example, if X equal to three and Y equal to four, R equal to five and theta is equal to tan inverse of four by three. If you give me R and theta, this is another problem. If you give me R and theta, that means if you give me R is equal to say five and theta is equal to 60 degrees, you can give in radians also. Then X is equal to five cos 60 degrees and Y is equal to five sine 60 degrees. I hope you understand this. If you give me R and theta, you can find X and Y. If you give me X and Y, you can find R and theta. So both are equivalent in some sense. Means equivalent means knowing one, you can find the other. Knowing R and theta, you can find X and Y. Knowing X and Y, you can find R and theta. Uh, this is the transformation between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates. Uh, I will stop here for now. I will continue again later. So what we have learned today is we have seen what are polar coordinates R and theta and then given X and Y Cartesian coordinates I know how to convert it into polar coordinates R and theta R is equal to root of X square plus Y square and theta is equal to tan inverse Y by X and given R and theta I can find X and Y X is equal to R cos theta and Y is equal to R sin theta. I hope this is clear. We will keep using this in the next part of the lecture.